I'm going to use the map function to look up for the transaction amount using the invoice number as a reference. So let me get back to the Jupyter Lab and start our coding. So first of all, we have to identify the location of this Excel file. In my case, it is inside D drive and data folder and the name is simple map example. So what I'm going to do is in the code area, usually I call it a data source and it's going to be equal to some path. So it's going to be inside D drive data folder. The name is simple map example and it is an Excel file. So that's our path. Let me press shift enter to run so it should be able to be stored once we get the data source defined we need to use a library called pandas to look up from the excel file let me import pandas as pd so we make it a little bit shorter instead of typing pandas i just need to type pd and i'm going to create a table called bk to store all these data and the table bk equals to pd it is inside the pandas library it has a method called read excel so what we are going to look for is the path and it is stored in a variable called data source it is purely optional but i usually print that out just to see if our code is right i'm going to call bk or if you're using another text editor you might use print bk but in Jupyter Lab, you can just use BK. So shift enter to run. It takes quite a while. Okay. This is the table that we get from the data source, which is this one invoice number, transaction type, and trans amount. Right. So this is our source data. We are going to look up for the transaction amount using the invoice number. Okay. Now we need to create another table called JE to look up for the transaction amount with the invoice number. But first of all, we need to fit in the materials inside the table JE. So it's going to be equal to, once again, we use PD, which is the pandas library, and then use a method called data frame to define the index column, which is the leftmost column and the rest of the columns. So usually it has index equals something, comma and then columns equals a dictionary of column names column a column b i just put a dummy name here let me just fit the invoice number column from the bk table to the index column of the je table so we tell the computer table is bk and a column which is wrapped around in the square bracket and the name of the column is invoice number invoice underscore num once again i can print out the table je to see what we get okay let me just press shift enter okay so you will see the leftmost column of the je table has an index column invoice number so the leftmost column of the je table is invoice column which is this one in the bk table Right. And we have two more columns that is wrapped around in a curly brace, column A, column B, right? But I didn't sort that, so column B comes before column A. Okay, and now I want to look up for a transaction amount from the BK table. So you will see a transaction amount column here in the JE table. Inside the JE table, I add a column, so you see a square bracket and the name is going to be actually you can call it whatever you want but usually i will use the name that i'm looking for which is transaction amount and this column is going to be equal to something okay what i need to do is i use the invoice number in the je table which is je dot index instead of typing je invoice number because it is not in the content area, it is the index column. So I can't use JE invoice number. So I have to use JE.index, which refers to this column. And then I use the map method to see a dot map 
bracket, right? So that is the map method. So it's going to be mapping to the BK table. But before we look up for the transaction amount, we need to make the invoice number of the BK table the index column of the BK table. So we need to set index. We need to set index and use a bracket to wrap around a quote which tells the computer the column name, which is invoice number. And then we add a square bracket to wrap around for the target column that we are looking for, which is transaction amount. Okay, so this is transaction amount. And then usually I will use, okay, actually I should, I need to add to, usually I will add it to underscore dictionary. Oh, sorry, the ICT dictionary method, and then I close the bracket. Then if I want to see the result, just type JE and then shift enter. Then I will have the transaction amount column being added to the JE table, and then you have the result. That's how you use the dot map method to look for the target table with a reset index to look up for the target column. So I hope it helps. Thank you. Bye-bye.